take a long time for that. To oh, I hate when that happens. Trying to get a grip on a day filled with freezing rain, sleet, and snow. Another winter storm causes problems all over the News 10 viewing area, and we'll take you there with live team coverage. And in Washington, senators at this hour are hearing opening arguments in the impeachment trial of President Bill Clinton. We have live coverage coming up. Good afternoon. I'm Renee Chenault. And I'm Larry Menti. All this, plus we could get a verdict in the Tom Capano murder trial at any time. It is a very big news day. But our top story on News 10 First at Four, the ice storm that has created some potentially dangerous conditions across the entire tri-state area. We begin in Narbury, Montgomery County, where icy conditions prevailed this morning. You know what that's like. Ice scrapers were a key piece of equipment in Narbury this morning. Anyone who left their car on the streets overnight was faced with an icy mess this morning. In most cases, cars were frozen under a thick coating of ice. Next, we go to Plymouth Meeting. Plymouth Township, where icy roads were a serious problem. At least four cars got caught on a slick spot sliding into an early morning pileup. This happened on the westbound exit ramp from the Blue Route to Germantown Pike. Road crews were called in to coat the area with salt. And we also found slippery conditions in Collingswood, Camden County, New Jersey. As you can see, side streets were coated with a layer of snow and sleet this morning. Drivers had to be careful while navigating neighborhood roads. On the major highways, it was wet, but not very icy. Here's what it looked like on Route 70. And as you can see, it was mostly clear sailing. And the messy weather isn't over yet, believe it or not. Yeah, sorry to say. Let's get the latest from John Belaris. John? Yeah, Larry, icy and dicey right through your evening rush as temperatures still remain way below the freezing mark in and around the city. The only exception would be extreme southern Jersey, central Delaware, above the freezing mark there. They're getting some liquid, just some plain rain. Let's check it out. We have winter weather advisories still for the city point south and east for that icy mix. Winter storm warning north and west for snow and ice that will continue right through midnight. Radar, Doppler picking up the green indicating sleet and freezing rain, especially to the north and west. Doylestown looks like a heavy band moving through there right now as we speak. So for your evening rush, we're anticipating the icy mix to continue from Wilmington to Hamilton to Lakehurst to Philly to Cherry Hill to Trenton to Doylestown to Reading to Allentown to the Poconos. That icy mix will be with us. The only exception from Millville to Atlantic City to Dover, just plain rain there. I'll be back in just a little bit and let you know when that plain rain line will move into your neighborhood in just a few minutes, Renee. All right, and as John just told us, the evening rush is the big concern here, so let's get a check on how area traffic's doing right now. Mark Davies is live in the News 10 Metro Traffic Center. Mark? Guys, for the most part, the day hasn't been bad. We're starting to see some volume again, plus the roads that were wet are now kind of seeing an accumulation of the sleet, which amounts to some slushy spots. I expect delays, especially in the boulevard between the Schuylkill and Broad. Otherwise, not too bad. Look at 95 by Cotman. North and southbound traffic here, a little bit sluggish, but nobody's going to wait too long on 95 out of the city. Same thing in Delaware County by 320. Both north and southbound are pretty much checking out okay. We did have an accident reported, 95 in South Philly by Packer Avenue, but so far nothing turning up. The Schuylkill at Conshohocken, east and westbound looks pretty good. You see a state police car sitting there actually in the turnaround on the on-ramp to eastbound 76. And finally the Ben Franklin Bridge. Some slow going here across the bridge because they just had some salt crews move across the bridge. Some generally slow going. Camden bound into Philadelphia though is not a problem. Keep in mind the Jersey Turnpike and motorcycle and trailer band in effect for the length and also a 45 mile per hour speed restriction, plus the same thing, a 25 mile per hour speed restriction at the Delaware Memorial Bridge. In the News 10 Metro Traffic Center, I'm Mark Davies for News 10. Mark, we'll keep checking back with you. I'll be here. Well, News 10 has live team coverage from the areas most affected by this ice storm. The Lehigh Valley could get most of the ice, as well as the resulting problems. We start in Allentown. News 10's Alicia Taylor is live with the very latest. Alicia, what are conditions like right now out there? Well, Renee, it is absolutely freezing here in Allentown. You know, for most of the day, a light snow fell, but right now, it's sleeting. It was so cold in Allentown today, Anna Salazar went out and bought a brand new ice scraper for her car. But she didn't buy just any old scraper. It's an electric um, ice scraper. Does it work? Yes. It's all me taking it out. Yeah, it's, it's good. I'm getting me one for my husband, too. Everywhere you turn, people were trying their best to stay warm. 
to the delight of most kids, all schools were closed for the day. Mm. You like having no school? Yeah. You like this weather? Yeah, it's rough. Why? <laughs> because it's snow. Because what? Because it's snow. Yeah. And while the kids enjoyed the light snow, it was an inconvenience to many parents. The daycares are closed too. That's why they were with me. I had to take them to work. But the daycares are closed. But the frigid temperature was the hardest on the people who had to work in it. Is this like the worst job on a day like today? Oh, yes. Everybody orders everything. From french fries to calzones. It's a nightmare in this weather. Now, for the most part, city crews are clearing the streets off, but take a look down here. The side streets, a lot of side streets in Allentown are just blanketed with snow. You see the snow here. And again, remember, it is about 8 degrees here right now in Allentown. We'll have that story for you tonight at 5. Reporting live from Allentown, I'm Alicia Taylor, News 10. No wonder you're cold out there. <laughs> 8 degrees. You need another layer on. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, try she just and stay wants warm. To get going. You yeah, <laughs> right. I'm sorry, Alicia. <laughs> See you later. It is much the same story in Montgomery County where the ice storm could turn many area roads into skating rinks. News 10 live right now in Harleysville. News 10's Barbara Monaco joins us live with the latest from there. Barbara. Larry, much the same, but fortunately, according to the sign at the bank behind me, it's 18 degrees here, 18 degrees and sleeting. But the question that we ask is, what's a parent to do when the schools are closed? They have to call babysitters, friends, relatives, and in some cases, take the kids with them to work. 11-year-old Jessica Louie isn't in school. She's enlarging photos at her uncle's photo shop. When class was canceled for the 6th grade Colonial Middle School student, her parents had an alternative. Send her to work with Uncle Scott. They said that I could come up to work, help out, and I was very happy. Instead of just staying home, watching TV and playing around, she actually can work and, you know, learn stuff in here. Pharmacy technician Kim Asbury had to come to work, and until she found someone to care for him, so did her nine-year-old son, Matthew. I actually put him to work organizing some papers for me, and, and he just bustled around, cleaned up the store for the girls up front, and kind of occupied himself till he could get home again. But many other parents didn't have an option. Faced with children out of school, they decided they had to stay home. <laughs> That's where LaVon Gifford was, playing with two-and-a-half-year-old Alyssa, while six-year-old Trey played video games. How'd she manage that? Well, because I have a great boss. <laughs> this is where LaVon should have been working. Genesis Fitness Center was a little short-staffed without her, but not everyone here was troubled by the school cancellations. On the Stepmaster, Norristown High School teacher Elizabeth Shine. She was as happy about her day off as many of her students. I'm going to go work out and take advantage that I don't have to go to school today. No kids for me. <laughs> now, despite the inconvenience, none of the parents that we spoke to was at all upset that schools were canceled today. They said their children's safety comes first. Live in Harleysville, I'm Barbara Monaco, News 10. All right, Barbara, children, and I got a letter today from an animal lover who said, please take your animals inside, too. We just took Barbara inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm talking too long. It's That's cold the latest. out there. I know. They're leaving. The photographer <laughs> said, I'm out of here. That's the latest. Stay here on News 10 for more coverage of our ice storm. For the first time in 130 years, a U.S. president is on trial facing impeachment. The charges? House prosecutors say Bill Clinton repeatedly put himself above the law and should be removed from office. News 10 national correspondent Steve Handelsman is live in Washington.
King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, has seen its fair share of snow, sleet, and freezing rain today as this winter storm continues to track across the Northeast. These are live pictures from the Philadelphia suburb. We'll have a live report from Jeff Morrow in just a minute. And we are at the Update Desk in the Forecast Center of the Weather Channel. I'm Janetta Jones. Thanks for joining us. We are tracking this storm and going to let you know how things are changing moment by moment. Let's look at the current scenario across the country. The biggest trouble spot will be right in here across the Northeast Corridor and interior regions of New England. We're talking about snow that has been heavy at times. We're talking about freezing rain, sleet, freezing drizzle, setting up a glaze of ice on the roadways. And we're also talking about some folks getting some rain and a changeover in some locations overnight tonight may occur as the warmer temperatures may be moving up the coast same time, though, temperatures are staying very, very cold for interior regions. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have a live report from our own Jeff Morrow. He's standing by in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. If you don't know where that is, that's just outside of Philadelphia. Jeff, can you tell us how conditions are shaping up right now? Well, we're still getting a little bit of sleet, Janetta. A little freezing mist may be mixed in at times, and that's still adding to what has been a kind of icy mixture uh, that we've had since late last night. Let me go ahead and step out of the way here and show you some of the traffic flowing here on the uh, Pennsylvania Turnpike as it comes up to the toll booth and then 76, Interstate 76 becomes the Schoolco Expressway. Uh, again, the road services here are mainly slushy at this point and the road crews have done an excellent job of getting the salt and the sand down, particularly on the PA Turnpike here, as they always do, and keeping things pretty much uh, clear for the commuters. As we look on over, you see some of the cars that are uh, parked over here. That's what maybe some folks will find. You had to scrape your windows when you went off to work this morning. You went into work, you come out, you're going to have to scrape them again because we've had that more uh, ice and sleet on top of that. So you're going to be busy. Maybe uh, leave the car running for a little bit and help melt some of that ice and sleet off the windshield. But the roads are in pretty good shape, at least the primary roads. A lot of the parking lots and the sidewalks still very, very slippery if they haven't been treated. So be careful out there if you're headed out this evening. My advice probably would be just stay at home. All right, let's get back to you, Janetta. Very good advice. Thanks so much, Jeff Morrow. We'll be checking back with him in just a little while. Now I'm joined by our winter weather specialist, Paul Kosen. You've been tracking this storm, and this is uh, the second storm in a couple of weeks. It's been quite a time for folks in the Northeast. Right. We're facing a similar situation with a lot of cold air and a battleground between some warm air that's coming up to the Northeast. So right now we're looking at still that massive high pressure system located across eastern Canada driving cold air southward. And we've seen some very heavy precipitation in the form of snow today falling across portions of New York and southern New England, including Massachusetts and uh, central New York. Uh, Binghamton has reported nine inches of snow, all with temperatures below 10 degrees. And we're also seeing the development of rather heavy snowfall across the central Finger Lakes region of New York into the Catskills up around Albany where temperatures are only a little bit above zero degrees. Mm, so a very cold day out there and it's going to get even colder overnight tonight. Well, it's going to, the temperatures are going to remain at very cold levels, certainly cold enough levels for snow. We're seeing over at Boston that even through much of east, eastern and western Massachusetts, conditions now for moderate to heavy snow are excellent for the next couple of hours. And how much snow will they pick up before things start to change? Well, right now we're calling for three to six additional inches and most of that area later tonight should probably change over to freezing rain and sleep, but not yet. Now as we move into Pennsylvania, it's a little different story. In Pennsylvania, we're seeing warming at the higher levels of the atmosphere. So much of the precipitation that's falling there is coming down in, in freezing rain or sleet. And uh, that precipitation is redeveloping. It's probably not quite as heavy that's going on in New York and New England right now. Okay. I want to talk about those temperatures, as you mentioned. Brutally cold stuff. Nine below currently in Burlington, 19 in New York City. But it feels like it's 15 below. At Islip, you're looking at sleet and snow, freezing drizzle at JFK, and some snow in LaGuardia. Look at those wind chills. 27 below is what it feels like in Rochester. Feels like three below in Minneapolis. Feels like two below in Flint, Michigan. And the actual temperature is not much better. It's nine right now. It's 13 in Minneapolis. As we look at the precipitation coming into play across the Ohio Valley, we can tell you about some rain in Lexington, some snow in Louisville, Kentucky. What we're seeing here are the beginnings of the next storm system of this current, or the next and last of this current pattern. So we're seeing uh, low pressure that's developing over the mid-Ohio Valley, but we will be seeing a secondary low develop further east along the coastline 
probably over the Carolinas, and that should be heading northeastward up along the eastern seaboard, seaboard later tonight and throughout tomorrow. So tonight and into tomorrow morning, what can we expect for New York City, Philadelphia, Boston? Okay, that secondary area of precipitation will begin to expand northeastward. They haven't seen all that much lately, but we'll see a redevelopment of the precipitation in terms of freezing rain and sleet tonight, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York. In Boston, they'll probably start out again as snow, but change over to freezing rain, and then all of the major cities will probably experience a brief change over to rain towards the end of the storm sometime during the day tomorrow. Mm, a very complicated system, and I know you're going to stay on top of things for yes. us. Thank you so much, Paul Cosen. If you are going to be away from your television set, never fear. We're right there on the Internet at weather.com. There are times, though.